Good morning and welcome to Mass at St John's Clevedon and welcome to those of you joining us from home, either live or later in the day. Today the propers are those for the 10th Sunday after Trinity in the Book of Common Prayer, which is on page 172. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth, thy servant, our queen and governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works, she may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in wealth, peace, and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please thee, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from the first epistle to the Corinthians. Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who worketh all in all. But the manifestation of that Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, divide into every man severally as he will. Here endeth the epistle.
the Holy Gospel is written in the 19th chapter of that Accunda St. Luke, beginning at the 41st verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. Praise be to thee, O Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a very different view from the one that travellers in the present day would see from the same spot. Though Jerusalem, when Jesus was teaching on earth, was subject to Rome and a puppet king, the beauty and the glory of the city were still magnificent. We know something of what it looked like from the works of Josephus, the Jewish historian from the first century. Much of the temple facade was covered with gold, while the top part of the building, which was exposed limestone blocks, was whitewashed once a year, leading to Josephus' description of the temple as a snow-clad mountain. That mass of gold and snow that was the temple glittered in the midst of the great city. It reflected the sun, just as it reflected great hope and confidence. Around the temple, far extending suburbs were covered with the gardens and the palaces of the wealthy. But the mighty memories which hung so thickly round the sacred city and the glorious house of God constituted its chief's charm, 
its chief glory. It was a magnificent sight, an inspiring sight. The centre of a great religion which was not just for the Jewish people, but was for the world. The prophet Isaiah said nations would stream to it to be taught the ways of God. What might not that city have been? What splendid and far-reaching work might it have done? Its potential was unbounded. But that potential was rejected. Now the cup of its iniquities was just brimming over. Only a few more short years and an awful silence would brood over the shapeless ruins of what was once Jerusalem and what was once her house on Zion. What was once meant to be the joy of the earth. For the Jewish people revolted against their oppressors and did so with dire consequences. The siege of Jerusalem in AD 70 was the decisive event in the first Jewish-Roman war in which the Roman army led by the future em Emperor Titus besieged Jerusalem. And following a brutal five-month siege the Romans destroyed the city and the temple. Jesus knew what would happen. We heard what he had to say in the Gospel reading. The way the people of the city behaved made it inevitable. So no wonder Jesus wept. And not merely silent tears of mute sorrow, the Greek of the Gospel tells us that he wept aloud. He came as Saviour, Redeemer, Messiah, Christ. But they rejected him. They rejected the way of God for a more secular agenda. They rejected Jesus for when he came to free them from sin and the results of sinfulness and bring them back to God, they were not ready for that. All they wanted was freedom from Roman rule. So they misunderstood. No wonder Jesus wept. But does he still weep today? Does he weep when he sees the Jerusalem of today? Or any of the great cities so caught up in our generation's secular agenda? Does he weep for Clevedon? Does he weep for us? We too face a choice. The agenda of our faith or the secular agenda. When we refuse to let Jesus come fully into our life, there will be no peace within us. No matter how rich we are, how powerful we are, how glitteringly successful we are, these trappings will not give us peace and can even complicate our lives and may even destroy us. That's the disaster that happened to Jerusalem. They did not find peace. They were destroyed by the Romans because they refused Jesus. They did not recognise him as the ultimate peace bearer. They were too interested in their secular well-being. Today, Jesus is always knocking on the door of our hearts. Let him enter, for he is the ultimate peace bearer. Now let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
As this water is mingled with its wine, and so Christ shared our humanity, may we so share the life of his divinity. Wash me truly from my sins, O Lord, and cleanse me from all iniquity. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishments of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortful words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, 
we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits of death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Hmm? The body of the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. The body of The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and as we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord.